Greetings! It's Sunday, I don't know what day it is, <laughs> the last Sunday in September, and uh, we're in the shed. I was hoping to get a lot of work done today, unfortunately, um, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm a little nasally. I've been under the weather, and my help is also under the weather. Ray has the flu, and he didn't get it from me, because we had I haven't seen him in a couple weeks, um, because both of our real jobs have had us working on the weekends. So I did do some work yesterday and I guess I wanted to kind of show you what's going on here. Um, building frames, right? And as you can see now, when I build them, I build them together and a lot neater, right? I've decided to add screws to them um, just for shock loading. Um, I think one of the viewers kind of pointed out that the epoxy, you know, it's not best <laughs> when shock loaded. So I decided to add screws as reinforcement, as well as all the nails. You know, steel, um, as well as the thickener, does provide the um, thickened epoxy with a little different um, attributes when it comes to being less brittle. But I just want to do that just in case. So I'm just adding two screws to uh, each joint. Um, anyway, the frames are coming out much better, much neater, and pretty much dead on perfect with the um, quality control measures that we've put in place. Really haven't done anything on the actual boat. Um, sort of just got them leveled up and trying not to get a head cold. Um, temperature's been interesting. Today's goal is to rip some of the stringers. And before I actually glue the frames, I kind of want to align the stringers to make sure that the lower chine is perfect with the stringer that runs along it. And um, start from there. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, that's a great tolerance.
All right, what you saw was my process of cleaning up these frames. Um, I ran the belt sander over them to knock down any uneven parts. Of course, I took the hammer to countersink those nail holes. With that nail gun, it's a battery operated, doesn't have a whole lot of punch. And so if you don't have it exactly flush on the wood when you're shooting, it doesn't countersink. And usually the ones that aren't countersunk were the ones that I was doing upside down um, when the frame was laying down at the bottom side. So we countersink those nails. We run the belt sander over to kind of flatten it that way when the router runs over it it's pretty smooth no bumps and lumps and then we clean up those edges pretty well with the router as you can see pretty easy easy peasy then I take the sandpaper and run over it just to knock down the edges don't want to get any splinters on my hands so uh, we'll take you back out to our What are those things called? Stringer <laughs> making factory in just a second. With a test run. So you're standing it up and you're really just trying to split it. All right, take it out. Take it out. Take it out. Well, this is our sample. So then both of those cuts should be equal. So see what you get. You should get a little bit. Three quarter, a little bit under three quarter. Uh, yep. See if the other one's exactly the same. Um, pretty little close. A little, little bit bigger. bigger yeah. A little bit bigger. So, shit. Which end was what? <laughs> All right. So this was up like that. Okay. So the cut side is bigger by by hair. So let's adjust that. That looks a lot better. I think that's it. Go ahead and measure. A little bit. Let's see. So what is that? That's a good bit under. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. Right? Three quarters. Like a sixteenth and a thirty-second. So let's see what this one is. It's about the same. Sixteenth. Slight like a thirty-second heavy. Well, we're going to be we're okay with that. that. Right. We're going to work with that. All right. So basically, if your saw ever gets off, mm -hmm. use this as your guide. You just okay. stick it in there and mm -hmm. then put the fence back up to it. So right on that save or something like that. Right. And uh, I'm cutting those right there. Yeah. And they're going to come in two pieces or they're going to be like just a slit? Is no, you're going to rip them. You're going to rip them. Let me explain why I'm ripping my own lumber instead of buying it. Um, here's why. All right, from the store, a one by one by three is crap. Okay, um, unless I paid a lumber mill to mill what I need. I need that wood to do this. You see that? See how that bends? Let me zoom in on that a little more. Look how easy that bends. Let me zoom out some. Can't really see it. There we go. So easy that bends. That's bending three inches and eight feet, which is perfect to use for the um <laughs> I keep forgetting what these things are stringers 
All right, so go ahead. We're good. All right. All right. So this is the end result of all that ripping. Out of three $10 pieces of Douglas fur, I now have 18 um, one by threes nominally. Instead of being three quarter inches, this is one sixteenth light of three quarter inches, so 11 sixteenths. <laughs> and it's Douglas fur. So I was pricing up this material for the stringers this week and some regular old Home Depot grade pine since some of you said I'm gonna have a Home Depot boat <laughs> some regular old Home Depot pine is about a dollar a foot a little less than a dollar a foot so to get Douglas fir would have been I guess about a dollar sixty a linear foot for one by four they couldn't give me one by three it had to be a mail charge so anyway let's 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 look at it so three two by fours I mean three no three two by tens cost me thirty dollars um, two hours labor not thirty dollars so for sixty dollars I got 18 pieces which is a hundred and forty hundred and twenty some feet linear feet um, so that's a savings of about half and is Douglas fur which is much better than what I would have gotten um, at Home Depot <laughs> which I have no problem buying lumber at Home Depot some of you who are boat purists think everything has to be teak and mahogany when you forget that Americans built boats that lasted for a long time out of spruce pine fir hemlock whatever was here of a good quality in the States and so even though um, you know using Douglas fir that I'm milling myself it just has to be stronger than foam because remember lots of boats are made out of foam core laid up <laughs> but of course my layup material is plywood so we should be pretty good to go here so that's about it for today um, it's a football Sunday and it's a beautiful day I mean it's about 65 degrees not a cloud in the sky absolutely gorgeous so I'm gonna watch the game spend time with my family nurse this cold I'm actually drinking a lemon ginger cayenne tea that I made fresh ginger root steeped for a couple hours um, fresh lemon um, some brown sugar and cayenne pepper it's really got some kick to it and hopefully it'll get rid of whatever's going on in my upper nasal area all right so from the boatyard until next time peace and blessings